Hey peeps, long time no see. Yes, I am in the United States. Uh, so today's Periscope is about why God is making me wait. And I've had a lot of time to think about this. Some of you know that I haven't been on Periscope for a while. Um, I've been out of the country since... When was I ever... Hey, saludo! I've been out of the country um, in September. I was in Copenhagen, and then I was in Hamburg, and then I was in Berlin, then in New York City, back in D.C., and now I'm in Pittsburgh. So, um, yeah, it's been a very whirlwind kind of time in my life. And so I started thinking, why is God making me wait, right? And so, uh, <laughs> why is God making me wait? And I started thinking about some things in my life. What is God trying to teach me during this time in my life? And so one of the things I identified that I have going on in my life is that I have Marsha. Hey, Marsha. Um, I actually realized that in my life, I have a a bit of pride that I never really dealt with. So um, first of all, pride. When I talk about pride, um, I'm talking about, hey, Terry, uh, things that I was prideful about. I was extremely prideful about my name, as weird as it sounds. Um, I like the sound of my own name, Timmy Komonibo. And I remember early on in my career or grad school, I was saying, you know, my goal in life is to make my be a household name. And I was like, yeah, I really want to be a household name. Everything that I did was to further my own name and my own reputation. At face value, that doesn't seem like a bad thing to do. But when you think about why we were created, <laughs> yeah, perfectly phonetic name. Timmy Komoniba has the right amounts of, um, oh, yay, Marsha. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Bishop's here. Um, so, yeah, so I really wanted to make myself a household name. And I was just like, I want I want, want people to know me, know my reputation, which is like good. It's good to be ambitious. But then I realized as a child of God, as a Christian, my goal in life is to be somebody who elevates God's name and God's kingdom. And so in my own search for self-promotion, I kind of got lost in that. And I was just like really obsessed with the legacy I was trying to create I wasn't concerned with the kingdom that God had put me on earth to help him grow, you know? So I was really obsessed with my name. Another thing that I was really, um, I was really prideful about. Oh yeah, prideful to the point where I was talking to uh, this guy and at some point and we had kind of ventured into the conversation about last names and he was like oh when we when not when when we when you get married will you ever change your last name? And I was like no, because I built this legacy. I built this like this thing with my name, why would I just change my last name? And feminist thought wise, that's like a valid thing to think about. But I realized that was very based in pride. I was not willing to change my last name because it's like I built this and I did this. When you get into a relationship with someone, it's not about pride. It's not about your singular kingdom or legacy that you built. It's about what you can build with that person. I'm not saying that I necessarily have changed my mind about the last name thing, but I identified like, hmm, my pride is really keeping me from a potential relationship because I have this idea that like, I bring all this stuff into the table. I did this and I did this and like, I wanted to be recognized for those things that I did. So the name thing was just like, God really dealt with me about that because like, Okay, your name is cool, but at the end of the day, my name is greater than your name. And I was just like, dang, Jesus. Okay, second thing, my degrees. So I just graduated. Hey, okay, so a Brazilian men take the last name of their wives. I will be going to look in Brazil for a future husband, perhaps. Unless he has to be a redhead Brazilian, which would be very hard to find. If you know of somebody, I'll let you girl. So second thing I was very prideful about was um, my degrees. So I have two degrees from UT. I have two degrees, two master's degrees from Syracuse. In my mind, graduating, I was like, I got two degrees. I'm on point. Look at my resume, blah, 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 blah. Something about um, grad school really humbled me. First of all, everybody in my program was getting two degrees. So I was on the same playing field as them. And then I was in Washington, D.C., which is the most overqualified um job pool that you will ever encounter in your life and so you're competing with people who have phds and people are telling these people who paid phds you don't have enough work experience and you're kind of like dang so it was a great humbling experience for me to know that i might be on paper very very educated and i might be very um i might look very accomplished to myself um 
but what is for you is for you is what I'm realizing. So I used to really like take it as a hit to my pride when I would get rejection letters. At this point, I have maybe about 26 versions of my resume and like countless cover letters talking about how great I am. And then at some point I realized every rejection letter that I get is not necessarily saying that you're not good enough. Because I started, to, after a while, job applying, I started to get this complex about like, mm, maybe I'm not smart enough, maybe I'm not good enough. Then I realized like that's a pride thing for me to think like when I go to job applications that it's me, 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 me powering everything. Now I'm realizing that like, God says that what is for you is for you. He knows the plans that he has for you, right? And so I have to really believe that and know that like my name is not what's going to get me the job. My degrees are not what what's going to get me a job. It's really him and using the connections that he has. So Terry just reminded me, um, I had this great conversation with Terry a while back. I was supposed to go to some networking thing and I'd like missed the bus and I forgot the time and I, I just couldn't go. And oh yeah, Suluro says, the Lord makes space for you. He definitely does. And I was supposed to go to this thing and I missed it. I was like beating myself up. I was so upset. And Terry says to me, like, Timmy, like really don't stress it because God is the master connector. You know God and God knows everybody. I said, what? What? Because it's true, right? We think about all the stuff that we have to do. We have to go to all these networking events. Like, yeah, do that. Do your part. But at the end of the day, who you are supposed to meet God will put you in place with that person, right? And so it, it's not your credentials. It's God's favor on your life that is going to open those doors. And um, so the whole like two degree thing, I had to realize that like the doors that are getting shut in my face, like it's for a reason. God has a purpose for me. And so one of my favorite job experiences, like f supposed fails was when I had an interview at USAID. Um, and I sat down at this interview it was weird. I had this like calming spirit. I had such a good time at the interview. I don't know if I've ever had so much fun at an interview. And they're asking me questions. We're chatting it up like we've been friends for life. And halfway through the interview, I just got this like feeling in my spirit like, man, I, this is not the job for me. I'm not supposed to work here. But I was still having a good time. I was still having a lot of fun. And so after the interview was over, um, the boss, the head boss emailed me and was like, Hey, I'm sorry. We decided to go with somebody else, you know, but I, you know, I really liked you. And then um, I was like, yeah, you know, I really liked you too. I, I thought there was a great connection. And so she was telling me like, hey, you know, let's stay in touch. And I was like, yeah, yes, let's please. And I had a grad school class and they were looking for guest speakers. And I, I asked her like, hey, would you like to be a guest speaker? We'd love to have you. And so she was a guest speaker. You know, I saw her. I was like, hey, good to see you. We hugged it out. And then um, later on, like two, three months later after I graduated, she said, hey, do you want an internship? And that's it. Okay, yeah, I'll do an internship at USAID. I, yeah, I think I could manage that. Um, and so even after my internship finished, she's now one of my really good mentors. So it just goes to show you that sometimes God puts you in places not necessarily for what you think. Um, he has a an alternate an ultimate plan for you that you don't even know about. And, you know, I was talking to one of my loved ones recently. And she's like, you know, nothing's going right in my life. And then I thought about the idea of nothing's going right. What is right? We don't really know what that right is. Maybe nothing's going as we expected, but God has this like plan in the background. And um, God has this back plan in the background for us that is like much grander than we could even imagine. That's the great part. So when I think about this struggle, when I think about the really great jobs that have not worked out, I'm thinking like, whoa, for that to not have worked out, God must have something supernatural for me. Um, yeah, Saluda says, we don't know the plan. We don't know the plan at all. And I laugh because I, this whole period of my life has forced me to be more social. And so I've been having like lunch dates with people, coffee. I don't even drink coffee. I've had so much hot chocolate. I'm, I'm done. So I have lunch breaks, um, coffee breaks, dinner, whatever. Anytime I can meet people just to talk to them and hear about their story. Everybody's story is about I came in to do one thing and now the job trajectory I'm on is completely different from what I expected. So that's been really cool. So um, God made me wait, just to recap, God made me wait so I could get rid of my pride concerning my name. God made me wait so I could um, work out my pride concerning my degrees and my qualifications. Third thing, God made me wait concerning my uh, finances. So I'm glad Marsha was in here earlier. Mar Marsha is the founder of the Finance Bar. 
and they do a lot of work with you know just helping people take control of their finances so prior to going to grad school yeah not all of our perceptions of what is success is well, not, not all of them are true that's really true that's what saludo was saying um yeah so prior to coming to grad school i had been a teacher and had the privilege of living at home my parents thank you so much for that um and so i was living at home and i saved a lot of money and i saved a lot of money i pro i had a very healthy bank account as as a, um, a new teacher i was about 25 years old had a pretty good bank account and so i got to grad school my grad school program was two years my first year was all paid for. Um, I had, I think I was a TA and I was a graduate assistant, so I didn't pay anything. This is Syracuse University, very expensive school. My second year, um, my first semester was paid for. My last semester was in DC, so I paid for that out of pocket. Paying for Syracuse University out of pocket really, I don't know if anything can ever pay, prepare you for that. Um, so I saw this number. So in my mind, I have this number of my fan finances that I feel very comfortable with. Um, oh, whoa. Saludo says, if God has called you to be a janitor of a company, don't stoop so low as to be a CEO for real. So going back to that, like that specific thing that God has called you to, that is the thing that you could do the best. And I think sometimes we get caught up with titles and like, oh, I want to be the CEO. I want to be the founder of this thing. And if that's not where God called you to be, you're not going to prosper as much as that specific thing that he called you to. So, Ludo, that's some good word. Um, okay, so back to the finances. So I had this number that I felt very, very comfortable with. And so almost overnight, that number just like, yeah, founders aren't the brains. Those that exist them are. Yeah, shout out to Marsha. Um, so, yeah, I remember that number that I felt really comfortable with ov almost overnight after I paid my tuition bills was gone. And so all that comfort that I had put in my bank account, I was just like, I was kind of prideful about that number. Like I'm a good saver. You know, I, um, my bank account is healthy. I don't have to worry. God took me to the point where it was like, yeah, God, I, ugh, I'm not comfortable. I wasn't destitute by any means, but that, that comfort that I built in my bank account was gone. And it was really me just looking at God and saying like, God, you are going to provide everything that I need. You have to, because I, I can't. So I had to really rely on God. Um, and this is the first time um, that I relied so heavily on him. And so it was just really interesting to me. I had to constantly say to people, I don't know why I was saying this. I felt really insecure about my finances. Um, I would go to try rent an apartment and they would say like, we need to see your bank statement. And I'd be like, oh, okay, you need to see my bank statement. And I would always preface it by saying like, uh, FYI, I used to be a real person with a full-time job. I was a teacher before I went to grad school. So I'm a recent graduate. So I still really feel insecure about that not real person status. And so I was like, I used to be a real person. I said that so many times that I'm like, chill out okay whoever you used to be being a teacher or being whoever you're not that person anymore and so i'm now on this limb where it's like really just god sustaining me right and it's a scary scary place to be but in this like lack that i have god has brought so many people out of the woodworks um terry who's in this paris periscope uh, my friend uche my cousin martha all the way over to Copenhagen. I'm telling you, when I was in Copenhagen, people on Facebook were connecting me with their friends. I had a friend from grad school kind of come out of the woodwork and was like, hey, you want to stay with me? I was just like, my mind is blown, right? And how God will provide for us. And for me, I've always been the kind of friend with that I don't really, I try not to ask for too much um, because I don't want to be a burden on people. But God has really shown me the beauty and the fullness of friendships. And it's made me want to be a better friend because people have befriended me in such uh, such an overwhelming way. Um, I don't know if I'll ever be able to pay these people back because in this time of my of my struggle, these people have opened their homes to me. These people have like... It's, it's incredible, right? And it just shows you that God can use anything to, to bless you. And I came back to D.C. after my trip. I was just like, I have a plan. I'm going to get this apartment. I'm going to get this job. Boom, 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 boom. No, God was like, nope, you're not. And so I am in Pittsburgh with my sister. Shout out to Desai. And having some really good, um, yeah, 
So having some really good like sister time and just hanging out with my family. So to say mention, yeah, being humble to accept what's going on in your life. It's taught me humility. Um, it's taught me to be a better friend. It's taught me to be empathetic. Honestly, when I see homeless people on the street now, I'm just like, <gasps> it's, it's a really eye opening experience because I watched this video about this homeless guy who had an MBA and he's like, anyone is one check away and maybe God forbid, I won't be homeless. God forbid. Um, but it just kind of makes you realize that like, we are so reliant on God. There is like one degree, like, you know, like we're not as separate from homeless people as we want to think that we are. Um, and we must rely on God for everything. So in this job search, in this weird transition period in my life, I'm just, I'm just really at peace with the work that God is doing in me. Um, he made me wait for my pride. And one of the biggest pride things for me was I used to lead worship back home in Houston. When I moved to Syracuse, I used to lead worship. And, um, I, I prided myself on being a worship leader. Like that's what I did all my life. I've been a worship leader. And um, this time I moved to DC and I had to, I moved into DC in January. I had to wait until September to join the worship team. And it, that's just the way that this, um, there's nobody whose entire life can be changed with a single phone call. That's true. Math Chandler said that. Thanks, Saludo. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I moved to D.C. in January and I um, couldn't get onto the worship team until September. And I was just like, God, why are you making me wait? Then I realized, once again with the pride thing, that every time I would lead worship, it wasn't always completely about God. Um, because I was a kind of fake humble about it. Um, you know, I'd get off the stage and people would be like, oh, you did such a great job. I'd be like, oh, praise God. And really, I was just like, hey, harmonies on point. You know, that's not what worship is about. Harmonies are great, but worship is really about looking at your creator and saying like, you are who you are. And I thank you for that. Once I had that revelation, everything changed, right? Because I, I realized when I was praying for my food, this is what my prayer used to sound like. Lord, Father in heaven, thank you for this. Oh, no, I didn't even say thank you. I said, Lord, Father in heaven, uh, I pray that you sanctify this food, bless it and give me a good appetite in Jesus name. That was literally my prayer. I was praying that God will save me from being poisoned. Hmm? Is that that's all you have to say to God? So my prayer started changing like, hmm, it's about God. So my prayer was like, Lord, I thank you for this food on my table. Um, I thank you for your provision. I thank you that old girl decided to bring chocolate chip cookies. I thank you that the company decided to sponsor lunch today. Praise you for that. You know, it started being about thanks, seeing the provision that he was bringing to me, not about like, oh God, you know, protect me, 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 me. It was really about you are worthy of all praise and adoration. So that was, that like changed my prayer life. So I think once I realized that everything is about God, even the job search is about God, right? When I think about, I used to think like, oh, everything is going to work out for my good. Mm, yes, but really at the end of the day, <laughs> Saludos down. Taste buds are an incredible blessing. Amen. They are. Um, at the end of the day, yes, it's for my good, but everything is for God's glory, right? That's why I'm convinced that he won't leave me to just be destitute, right? I said destitute twice in this periscope. Um, he won't leave me alone and just to, to rot away, right? Because everything is for his glory. And so I know that my life, everything that happens to me, um, everything that happens to me, I'm going to be able to testify of God's goodness and say, this happened to me. This is a testament that God is good. This is a testament that God is still in the business of doing miracles. And uh, I know that God is using our lives, every single good and bad thing. He's weaving this really intricate story. And I'm glad that my life, nothing about it has been traditional. Um, I was kind of complaining about, yeah, it just says as a living testimony of his grace. A while back, I was complaining about how I hadn't had a break since 2007. Um, I think I've said this in several periscopes. I graduated from high school, started college um, a week later, and then graduated from college, started Teach for America a week later, finished Teach for America, started um, grad school a week later. So every, my entire life has been boom, 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 boom. I was literally exhausted. And God was like, oh, you're tired. Here's a four month break of doing nothing. And I'm just like, <laughs> 
I needed it, right? I absolutely needed it, but everything is for his glory because he's weaving this really untraditional story. And um, I can only laugh because it's like, he knows exactly what I need. I would never be like, God, give me a several month long break to get my mind right. But I'm really getting my life together. I'm getting my mind right. I'm connecting with friends and family. I needed this. I hope it's not forever, but I definitely needed this. So, you know, I'm just saying everything. I'm seeing God in everything. Everything that happens to me, it's God. Even the really unfortunate things that happen, it's an opportunity to look and learn more about God. Um, so yeah, this Periscope is just about encouragement all of you who are in the wait with me um you're waiting as it says says his timing is intricate and it's like so on point yeah this i said it perfectly um you guys are waiting along with me and whatever you're hoping in god for whether it be a job whether it be a spouse that house that you know that crazy entrepreneurial dream that you have like god is placing you exactly where you need to be and back to saludo's comment about how no single phone call can can change your life i remember putting a lot of pressure on myself and saying like oh the other day i sent an email right i sent an email to a potential employer and it was like perfect there was one typo in it and i was just like oh my life is over i can't and i was freaking out and i was like hmm do I believe that God is the author and the finisher of my faith? I do. Do I believe that one typo can ruin my entire life? I don't, right? I don't think, I think I should have definitely proofread the email several times. I thought I did, but maybe I didn't. Um, but it just made me realize there's nothing I can do to just radically alter my own life. My life is in God's hands. And so it's comforting to me um, to know that the pressure isn't all on me. I can do all that I can do. I can write a really good resume. I can write a really good cover letter, but it's him who's going to put it in the right hands, right? Yeah. In the end, God does it. You're just an instrument. That's what Jesus says. And I agree. And so it's just really cool to realize how good and how in control God is. And even when we feel like, God, please, I'm holding on by like by the thread, by the skin of my teeth. Like, don't worry about it. God has got you. He's got you. He sees everything. And that's the great thing about us knowing, not knowing the plan. We are like, this is what I want. And God's like, oh, I'm working on this. I'm working on this. I'm like, you good, God, do whatever you need to do. And boom, out of nowhere, he brings your breakthrough. So I believe all our breakthroughs are coming. And I've been praying for you guys. Some of you, I don't even know your names. And I'm just like, God, whoever is going through this struggle alongside me, I pray that you give them the peace that surpasses all understanding. Like, I want it to be that you are like struggling or whatever. But people are like, why are you smiling every day? I really just try. I really just try to be upbeat um, just to show my faith because I know this is a really scary time for some people. We have no idea what's coming next, but I know that my God will not leave me. He will not forsake me. He will not let the righteous be put to shame. He won't. Um, and I'm not saying that I'm like super righteous, but in him I am made righteous. So I'm going to hold on to that. Yeah. So this Periscope is for you guys. Keep hope alive. Um keep believing in his word. He will never leave you. He won't forsake you. All the devotionals I've been reading so far have been about God going before you and behind you. And I find that to be so comforting. And I think, um, that, that was my prayer that, uh, no, Dizze is not in the room. Dizze is at work. <laughs> She's not in the room commenting. Um, so the funny thing is that, uh, yeah, I, that, that's what I've been praying about. The Lord, <laughs> To say says bye, Saludo. Um, to say, uh, no, not to say. I've been I've been praying that God would guide me in every conversation that I have. I've had some really funny interactions, uh, funny interactions and really God moments from just random conversations with people. So I I pray that God go before me, prime that person's heart for a conversation with me. And even when I leave, I pray that you in their mind, you know. Let them have a good impression of me. Give me favor whenever I walk into a room. So even praying that God would guide my tongue as I speak to people has been very helpful. It takes the pressure off me. I'm not as nervous when I go into networking things because I'm like, I'm talking, but God is really doing the work. So yeah, anyway, oh, yeah, I hadn't periscoped in a while, but that's the encouragement I wanted to share with you guys. Um, yeah. Feel free to share this on social media if you want to. I'll probably uh, share it as well. The broadcast will be up for 24 hours. Um, shout out to everybody who's watching. Desai, Saludo, 
Marsha, thank you so much. Please Google Marsha Barnes. Marsha Barnes is killing the game right now with the finance bar. Um, all you food truck lovers, she has a finance truck. I will one day have a style lottery truck in Jesus' name. So, yeah. Anyway, thank you guys. Yay, beastie word. Oh, my gosh. All this for me and Jesus. See how I gave him praise just now? Sorry, God, I'm working on it. Um, anyway, have a great day, everybody. And see y'all later. Bye. Mwah. I never know how to stop this.